to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlick, the original malted milk. Many of our listeners are mothers of babies. These mothers are faced with no problem more important than that of selecting a proper food for the infant. That is why I'm taking these few seconds to remind them that Horlicks is pure, nutritious, easily digested. It contains only the richest full cream milk, milk which has been pasteurized and modified by Horlicks' special process in combining it with the extract of the choicest malted cereals. These act upon the milk in such a manner as to make it much easier for the infant to digest than ordinary cow's milk. Equally important is the fact that Horlicks can be prepared in a minute simply by mixing thoroughly with water. In itself a well-balanced food, Horlicks is also recommended as a fine, nourishing, sustaining food for the mother. And now let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, yeah, Lum is out on bond, facing charges of violation of the Blue Sky Law in connection with the sale of stock in the Great Western Sterling Silver Company. The old fellow is taking advantage of his freedom by trying to raise enough money to reimburse the stockholders for their bad investments, hoping in this way to clear himself of the offense with which he is charged. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Abner just entering Dick Huddleston's store. Listen. Uh, come in, Abner. Come in. What can I do for you? What can you do for me? What about this bed? Ah, uh, well, he went into the county seat today. Got me to look after the store for him. Well, I'll be dogged. What they going there for? Why, he went in there to see the judge about Lum's case, but he don't want Lum to know nothing about it. See the judge? Yeah, he's going to try to get them blue law sky, or blue sky laws, or whatever they call them, going to get them... Draft again him now since uh, Lum's paying all the stockholders back and the money they invested on the silver mine. Well, good for him. Yeah, he thinks maybe he can get him out of it, huh? Well, he said he's going to try. He's going to explain to him how come Lum to be mixed up in it and all. Yeah, well, I hope he can get him out of it. I never saw a man worry so much about anything in my life. Well, I reckon you'd worry too if you were facing a penitentiary. Yeah, yeah, I reckon so. I wonder how long a sentence a fella draw on charges like that, a violating the blue sky law. Yeah, I don't know. Dick says he figures if I'm found guilty whenever it comes to trial, uh, he'll get around ten years on it. Ten years? Yeah, that's what he said. I know that's a long time, especially when a body gets up to old Lum's age. Yeah, it is. He'll be getting long years whenever he gets out of that. Oh, it'd be a shame, Grandpa. It'd be a shame. I doubt if his health would ever stand for it. I don't believe he'd live to serve his term. No, no. All on account of that no-count squire skin, too. Well, he ought to have more sense than ever get mixed up with him in the first place. He knowed squire, knowed how unhonest he was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there ain't a thing to him. Not a thing. Never made an honest dollar in his life. Lom out here selling everything he's got in the world, trying to raise enough money to pay off his stockholders and... Squire was the one that got all the money when the stock was sold. Yeah, but Squire's long gone now. Ain't no use to look for him for it. Now, I doubt if we'll ever hear from Squire Skimp again. Well, his woman's here. They still got that place over there. Well, yes, but if you want my notions on it, Abner, he left her too, and she don't know it. Well, now, he might have. For I know they never got along any too well. She was again all these crooked deals he was pulling around here. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's a fine little woman. I feel sorry for her. I know right, she... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yonder comes old Lum now. Yeah? I reckon he just got back from Mount Ida. Mount Ida? Yeah, he went over there this morning to see if he could borrow some more money from that bank over there. Uh -huh. So he could finish paying off for stockholders. Yeah, he, he trying to do the right thing all right, Lum is. These stockholders never thought they'd get their money back. No, no. Well, come in, Lum. Howdy, Lum. Well, howdy, howdy. Did you have any luck over at Mount Howdy? Yeah, I got the money all right, but I had to put up my interest in our rolling grocery store to do it, though. Well, for goodness sake. Well, how do you expect to pay all that money back, Lum? Mm, I don't know, but I've got the stockholders' their money back. I'll find some way to pay it. Well, the stockholders sure appreciate you paying them back, Lum. I know that. Well, of course, I wanted to see them get their money back. I hate to lose everything myself, too, but I've got to do it. At least they can say I'm being honest about it. I never beat them out of nothing. No. 
Well, it wouldn't surprise me long if they don't drop them charges again you now. Yeah, that's what I sort of figured. They ain't got no case again me now. No, well, it wasn't your fault to start with. Squire Skimp's the one that done it. Yeah, but I was president of the company, and they hold me responsible for it. Of course, now everybody's paid back, so... Wait a minute. Now, Granny's, I ain't paid you back, Abner. Well, now, that's all right. I'll never aim for you to. Why, sure, I'll pay you back. I'm paying back everybody. Well, now, you don't owe me nothing, Mom. If I ain't old enough to invest my money now, well, I ought to lose it. Why, it's your fault, no way. Well, here now. I've done borrowed the money to pay you with. Here. No, no, sure enough now, Mom. I'd tell you wouldn't do that. Abner, I I've got to pay you so that I can clear myself. If I can prove that nobody lost nothing on the deal, they can't convict me on that fraud charge. Oh. Well, I'll take it then, but it's your money now. Anytime you want it, just recollect that. Well, you go ahead and take it now anyway, and if I get in a tight and get to needing it, I might want to borrow it off of you for later. Yeah, well, borrow nothing. It's your money. You just come and get it anytime you need it. You better get them stock certificates and give them back to me, too. Oh, you want them back, huh? Yeah, I see. I'm getting all the stockholders to give them back to me. Won't be no evidence out against me that way. Huh? Except them three shares I sold at Mr. Donahue's, of course. That government man. If I knowed where I could get in touch with him, I'd send him his money back, too. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about him. Well, I'm you're trying to do the right thing, all right. I'll say that for you. And whilst I can't tell you how I know, I believe the judge is going to drop them charges again, yeah. What you're worrying me now is how in the world you're going to pay all this money back here, barn. Barn, it's one thing, and paying it back something else. Well, just offhand, I don't see no way of paying it back myself. I reckon they'll just have to foreclose me. Well, law me, Lum, if you just give a mortgage on your place there for $2,000 and they foreclose on that, why, it'll be, they'll be taking it away from you for about half what it's worth. You won't have nothing. Well, I don't mind so much about myself. I can get along some way. They can't starve me, I know that. But I hate it on account of Evelina. See, I wouldn't want this to go no further, but <laughs> her and me were sort of aiming on getting married long about Christmas time. Well, I do know. Well, that's fine. I, I don't think she'll hold this again, you though. She knows you weren't guilty. Why not? Well, it ain't that. It's just that I won't have nothing to get married on. I couldn't expect her to get married to me and me so far in debt as I am now. Well, I'll to take the house right out from under us. Yeah. yeah. It looks to me like now's the time to get married, Lum. She's got a good job over there teaching school, $60 a month. She could help you pay off your debt. Why, sure she could. I know that that's a good idea, Grandpa. No, I wouldn't want to get married to her unless I could make a living. She's independent enough the way she is. <laughs> She was making a living. I couldn't get along with her at all. Man, no. Of course, a man's just got to tell him right off who's boss on. Then you don't have no more trouble with him. Just have it understood to start with that you're the boss. Well, I don't know that you boss and your woman Elizabeth around, then. Well, no. That's the reason I'm a telling you that. That's where I made a mistake. Not showing her right off that I was boss of that house. I dog as I ought to just be running things over by myself all the time. Yeah, fellow ought to have an understanding with them. That's what I done. That's the thing to do. Well, all me, Grandpap, you ain't got no more say so around that house of yours than one of them hound dogs over there. Well, I've got to say so. Charity just won't pay no attention to me. That's your trouble. Yeah, well, <laughs> I have a little trouble that way over at my place, too, Grandpap. Elizabeth's awful stubborn woman to argue with. Well, I've just got to get into some kind of a business where I can make a lot of money quick. Yeah, that's what you ought to do. I've got myself out of all this trouble, but now I've got myself in the debt. I've got to get out of that. Granny, if it ain't six or one thing, it's something else. Yeah. Well, you just got to wait, pay Wait a minute. I believe that's Dick. Yeah, there's Dick driving up out in front now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where's he been? Why, he driven into the county seat today. I've been to keep him store for him here all day. Oh, well, I just allowed he'd stepped over to his house for something. Yeah, he, he's more likely got some good news for you, Lom. Good news for me? Yeah. <laughs> now, Abner, just hash right up. Dick never wanted Lum to know about that. Oh, oh, yeah. What is it? Never wanted me to know about what? Well, Dick will tell you about it. Yeah, well, howdy, Dick. Now, uh, Richard, I see you made it in there and back all right. Yeah, I've never had any trouble at all. How are you, fellas? Why, pretty good, yeah, I reckon, fine, Dick. fine. Anything been going on much, Grandpap? No, it's been sort of quiet, Richard. Sold a little stuff. Yeah. Well, I didn't expect much doing today. It's always quiet on Friday. <clears throat> Let me sit down. 
tired. The roads are awful dusty today. Need a rain. Yeah, well, uh, uh, did you want to see me about anything, Dick? Did I? Huh? Uh, tell me something good news or something like that? Why, no, not that uh, I Richard, I told that crazy Abner what you went into town for, and of course he had to go tell them. I that never I told him no such a thing, Grandpa. I just said that Dick might have some good news for him. Oh, yeah. Well, I see what you mean. Well, I went into the county seat today to talk to that judge about your case, Lum. Oh, that's where you been. Well, good for you. <laughs> I just thought maybe that would be a good idea for me to go in there and see him. We're pretty good friends, you know. Yeah, I know, yeah. You uh, sort of handled his campaign for him out here. Yeah, well, I went in there and explained to him that Squire Skimp was the one that got all the money out of it and that it was his idea all the way through he promoted the thing. You know? Yeah, I sure was. And I told him that you wanted to do the right thing about it, that you were borrowing the money to pay all the stockholders back what they'd invested in the mine, even more that you didn't get anything out of it yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's just what I done, too. And... And what, Dick? Well, what? he says that's the worst thing you could have done, Mom. Huh? Paying back the stockholders. Because he says when the case comes to trial, why, they'll bring out that you must have thought you were guilty or that you wouldn't have paid them back. Uh, the judge said that? Yeah, he said that you haven't got a chance in the world to come clear unless you can locate Squire Skimp and bring him back for that trial. Oh, my goodness. Well, I grant he's I'll find him, then I'll find him. I don't care. And we rather imagine Squire Skimp is going to be pretty hard to locate. Ladies and gentlemen, you've often heard me say that Horlick's tablets are fine for many, many occasions. Well, listen to these random letters from our fan mail. From Texas. Down here, cities are mighty few and far between. That's why many of us carry Horlick's tablets as almost a permanent part of our car's equipment. When we get hungry, we just dissolve a couple in the mouth and we're all set. One fine thing about them is that they satisfy but don't spoil appetite. From North Dakota. The fact that my husband uses Horlick's tablets on his golf trip first induced me and my friends to try them around the house. Now we always have them handy and often take them along when we go shopping. Housework and shopping certainly use every bit as much energy as golf, and we find Horlick's tablets so refreshing. And from Pennsylvania. I wonder if your other listeners ever use Horlick's tablets in the factory or office. Up here we find they come in mighty handy when we can't go out to lunch on time. They keep us satisfied till we can Many of us use them in the afternoon, too. You know that hungry period, about 4 o'clock. They sure fit in nicely then. Motorists, office and factory workers, golfers and shoppers. Everyone has a use for Horlicks, those concentrated, nourishing energy tablets. You can get them, you know, in handy 10-cent-sized flasks, in either natural or chocolate flavor, also in larger sizes. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks. We'll now bid you all goodbye until Monday at this same time.